Well, Kat Tenbarge, the online media reporter who staunchly defended Amber Heard and repeatedly attacked pro Johnny Depp YouTubers, and really has been doing this for years, she just recently did a podcast interview a few days ago where she talked more about the Depp Heard case and pro Depp YouTubers, and then also got into the Marilyn Manson case, or as I've been discussing it, the hoax perpetrated against Marilyn Manson by Amber Heard 2.0, Evan Rachel Wood. Anyway, Kat Tenbarge had this to say on this recent interview. It's really difficult situations for journalists who, when you're put in the position of having to either crack that facade um, or go against whatever the prevailing opinion of the fandom is, then it really almost, it, well, not almost, in a lot of ways, it puts you in danger, um, especially in this moment, mm. because the technological ability that fandoms have to harass people, to hurt people's reputations, and to intimidate people into silence is really unprecedented because i think like the marilyn um, manson case is kind of interesting for that because he's obviously yes. got he's soundtrack moments people's lives like moments that people are sacred in their personal histories and i think the attacks like whenever i've shared any stories around that case and there's been a lot of reporting and a, with a lot of detail and a lot of facts and a lot of him telling on mm -hmm. himself as well like literally admitting to things he's done in interviews yep. and um his book in all sorts of places and you notice the kind of like pushback but like i i saw some of the the discourse around some of the reporting you've done and it's it's unbelievable mm -hmm. the like levels of vitriol and it feels very much people in yes. their feelings and not there's that there, there feels like and i don't know how much support for instance you get from um i remember taylor lorenz talking about the lack of support mm -hmm. she was getting when she was being kind of doxxed in um the, like the levels of abuse that she was getting after i think tucker to carlson or someone went after her like there's a whole yes. like thing that the media's never experienced and i'm just curious what kind of protections you think there could and should be and and also the idea of free speech being curtailed by basically mm -hmm. feeling do i want to put up with three weeks or six months of abuse right. just for telling the truth yes exactly you know, as I was speaking, you know, I was thinking about the Marilyn Manson case because I'm always thinking about mm. the Marilyn Manson case because the whole thing, I, I haven't done as much reporting on it as others have, but it just like watching it, it, it's even affected me because his defenders are so passionate that they latch on to things like the yeah. Deb Heard well, case good because Johnny, Deb and Manson are such good friends. Mm. Exactly. And so you see it like the tendrils of the Marilyn Manson I, I would guess I would just refer to it as a targeted harassment campaign because they have very clear targets. The tendrils of it reach out so far. And what you said about how he gives it, gives it away, it's just honestly one of the most like mind bending things to watch someone like say to the public what they do and then have those people turn around and be like, he could never yeah. <laughs> do this. It's, it's, it's surreal. I have to say that I was surprised to hear that Kat Tenbarge thinks about the Manson case all the time, because I just assumed that all of the ignorant pronouncements that she's been making about the situation for the past couple of years have sprung from ignorance. But she says that she thinks about it all the time. She she apparently is obsessed with it. So so she must be very well educated as to what's actually been going on the last couple of years. And I guess there's just a problem with her not quite getting everything into focus to be able to really see the truth of the situation. So I want to help Kat Tenbarge here. Now that I know that she thinks about the case all the time, we, I think we should be able to find some common ground since apparently she's very well educated on it, right? Just thinking about it all the time, following it all the time. So there are some things that I would like to uh, like to ask Kat Tenbarge right now, since she is apparently so well educated on the Manson case and has been paying so much attention to it and thinks about it all the time. So Kat Tenbarge, here are my questions for you. Are you okay with Evan Rachel Wood faking an FBI letter blaming Marilyn Manson for her abducting her own child, kidnapping her child from his rightful father, actor Jamie Bell, absconding to Tennessee and withholding the child, refusing repeatedly to allow the child to see 
Jamie Bell to the point where Jamie Bell had to go to court and had to plead with and beg with the judge to do something about it. And of course, Evan Rachel Wood ended up losing custody of her child. She's admitted she doesn't have custody anymore, although she made up some BS reason. She lost custody of her child because of all these games that she was playing with her ex, trying to withhold the child from him. Well, she blamed all of that on a supposed FBI investigation into Marilyn Manson because she says that she had to run away to Tennessee with the kid and keep him away from his father because Marilyn Manson might be after them. And in order to prove this to her ex, Jamie Bell, who was demanding to see his child, Evan Rachel Wood and her lover at the time, her lesbian lover at the time, uh, they typed up a fake FBI letter and Evan Rachel Wood actually presented this fake letter with with the name of a real FBI agent that she faked, fake signature, all of that, she presented that actually in court, in the custody court case, which is probably another reason why she ended up losing custody of her kids. So since you were so well educated, Cat Ten Barge, on this, I'm just curious, what are your feelings about Evan Rachel Wood faking an FBI letter, impersonating an FBI agent, and using that to keep a child away from his rightful father, and, of course, lying to the court. You okay with that? Because, I mean, you're so well-educated on things, right? Uh, two witnesses have gone on record saying that Evan Rachel Wood lied about what happened in the music video that she did with Marilyn Manson. Of course, Evan Rachel Wood claims that Marilyn Manson raped her on set, on camera, during the filming of that music video. Well, I've talked to one witness who was there uh, done two videos with this person and she completely completely denies Evan Rachel Wood's perspective on that on what happened and not only her but there's someone else who went online uh, about a year ago a major media figure and said that she was on set as well and she had a different perception also from Evan Rachel Wood. So we have two people going on the record to basically call out Evan Rachel Wood for being a liar. And of course, you must know that, Cat Ten Barge, right? Because uh, you're an expert and you think about Marilyn Manson all the time. So how do you feel about that? What do you have to say about the fact that two witnesses to, to what happened on that video set have completely, uh, have completely debunked what Evan Rachel Wood claims? Also, uh, exes, former girlfriends, former fiancés, and former wives of Marilyn Manson have gone on the record publicly to say that he was not abusive, that they do not recognize the behavior that Evan Rachel Wood and some of these other conspirators are claiming that they were subjected to. We're talking about Rose McGowan. Yes, Miss Me Too. We're talking about Paula Weiss, a model and former girlfriend of Marilyn Manson. She's gone on my show. She's talked on numerous occasions about the truth about him. He wasn't into kinky sex. He wasn't into BDSM. He wasn't abusive. He was gentle. He was a good guy. And he was a schmuck when it came to women. Well, we can agree on that, can't we? Um, you're very well aware, of course, Cat Ten Barge, of what I'm talking about, right? Because you're obsessed with the Marilyn Manson case. So how do you feel about that? How do you explain that? Um, how do you feel about evidence that Ilma Gore and Ashley Walters, two women who have gone after Manson, tried to hack into Manson's accounts? And in fact, Ashley Walters did access multiple of his online accounts to try to get in touch with former exes of his to try to get them to join the conspiracy. Of course, Ilma Gore, Evan Rachel Wood's ex-girlfriend and co-conspirator, was also going around sending out emails trying to recruit exes of Manson's to go after him. How do you feel about that? You're very well aware of it, right? How do you feel um, about the fact that the book that you keep citing about Marilyn Manson, his supposed autobiography, which you say has all of these stories in it that show what a bad guy he is. How do you feel about the fact that that book has been debunked by multiple people who were discussed in the book, who have come out and said, nah, the stories in there didn't happen. These are fabrications just to help sell books, just to create a sense of, of, of titillating interest in in the public so that they would buy this book. How do you feel about the fact that multiple people, including Trent Reznor, have come out and said that it's BS? How do you feel about the fact that the book itself offers a disclaimer if you actually read it, which clearly says that the book is fiction and is not truth? Did you read the book? I mean, you're an expert, right? So you saw that part, that disclaimer, where it said that it's fiction, and you're aware that the book has been debunked by numerous people who were mentioned in it. 
You're aware of that, right? So how do you explain it? How do you explain the fact that two of the lawsuits against Manson suggest that he abused a young, innocent fan on film in a kind of a snuff film uh, that they were forced to watch? Well, how do you feel about the fact that that's been debunked now by the very actress who was in the film? And she says, no, I wasn't underage. No, I wasn't abused. It was a lot of fun. I felt very safe. There were other people on set. I was paid for it. It was an acting job. I loved it. How do you feel about that? Because uh, you and others are claiming that he was this monster that was uh, that was making these these you know horrible films where he was abusing women. Well, that's been completely debunked. And if you watched my show, you would see that. So you're an expert, right, on the Manson case. How do you feel that that aspect has also been debunked? That aspect of the claims against him has also been debunked. How do you feel about all of the statements that Evan Rachel Wood made, not only when she was dating Manson, but for years after she was dating Manson, where she claimed that he was a good guy, wasn't abusive, gave her, was the first boyfriend to really give her freedom and help her find herself, etc., etc., completely contradicting the much later statements that she's made about Manson's abuse. You think we should just, like, just discard that, right? Yeah, of course you do. How do you feel about the fact that Evan Rachel Wood dressed up as Hitler voluntarily for Halloween and we have pictures of her actually drawing on the mustache herself that she wore in her Hitler costume? How do you feel about the fact that when she was dating Manson, uh, she would do Nazi salutes on the side of the stage when no one else, not Manson, not any of his fans, not anyone in the crowd, not anyone backstage was doing this? Evan Rachel Wood seems to have been quite the Nazi enthusiast at the time. Of course, that was all Big Bad Manson's fault, right? Even though she seems very happy and pleased to be doing it. It was just coercion, right? Yeah, sure, Cat Ten Barge. Also, Cat Ten Barge, why are you so determined to believe that Ashley Morgan Smithline the previous Manson accuser who flipped and declared in a legal sworn declaration that Manson did not abuse her and that she was coerced by Evan Rachel Wood and Esme Bianco into making up false claims against him. How do you feel about the fact that she has debunked these claims and she has said that he didn't abuse her and that she was part of a hoax, which she then recanted? I know that you think that she did that just because I bullied her into it with my YouTube videos. But uh, you know what? Ashley Morgan Smithline's DMs are open. I do DM with her occasionally on Instagram. And you, Kat Tinbarge, you could actually contact her yourself and she'll tell you the truth. She'll tell you the same truth that she's been telling people for a while now, that she that she told the court in her sworn declaration that it's a hoax, that she was recruited, that she was lied to by Evan Rachel Wood, and she was pressured and coerced into making false statements against Manson, which she now regrets. I know you think it's all my fault, but you know what? Why don't you DM her and get the truth on why she did what she did? Or just watch the interview that she did with Popcorn Planet, where she made it all very, very clear. Yeah. But you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to DM her. You don't want to get the real truth. You'd just rather blame it all on me. Mm-hmm. Why is it, do you think, that the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office and the L.A. Sheriff's Department looked through all of Manson's electronic devices, his computer, his hard drives, his phones, his iPad, everything he's got, they have in done a full inventory of it. They did this a long time ago. What, like over a year ago? And guess what? The Sheriff's Department closed the case. They sent it to the DA, and the DA is doing nothing. Why do you think that is? I mean, our entire lives, as you know, Kat Barge, because you're a tech reporter, our entire lives are documented now in our computers and our iPhones. And, like, basically, if you know what's in my computer, if you know what's on my hard drive, if you know what's in my iPhone, then you know me better than the people around me. Well, the LADA and the LA police have seen all of that stuff from Manson because we know that they confiscated it all and they looked through all of it and they did a full inventory and they've just been sitting on things for what, over a year, almost two years now? They're just letting this predator run around freely while they know, (laughs) meantime, while they know after looking at his stuff that he's a horrible, dangerous predator, and they're just sitting on it? You really think that makes sense, Cat Ten Barge? Or could there be another reason for that? Could it be that the Sheriff's Department and the LADA 
know that there's no evidence against him and know that it's a hoax and that's why they've not done anything to Manson. Hmm. You don't have any issues with that. You know, no, no curiosity, huh? Why is it, do you think, that multiple Manson accusers, including his former assistant and Esme Bianco, went to Manson concerts for years after the fact, some of them, while now claiming that they were abused. So he abused them, and then they were so traumatized by that abuse that for years they kept going to concerts and they kept celebrating their association with Manson online. You know, until Me Too came along, and until Evan Rachel Wood came along, and until they realized they could get attention and they could get money in lawsuits for changing their stories. Um, why do you think they were going to those concerts then? Oh, oh, I remember. You think that if someone claims to be a victim, then they're excused from all irrational or contradictory behavior, right? It's like, oh, you're a victim, so of course you're just going to behave totally irrationally. So of course this guy rapes you, he assaults you, he threatens your life, throws an axe at you or whatever, and then years later you're still you're still celebrating him and your association with him on social media and you're still going to concerts, Manson concerts, and you're still bragging about it. But that just makes perfect sense because, you know, victims, when they're victimized, then their, their brains just turn to mush and they just do crazy things that don't make any sense, you know, and we should just overlook it all. Any lies, any inconsistencies, any stupid stuff that people claiming to be victims do, we should just excuse it because when you become a victim, your brain just turns to mush and we can't hold you account for contradictory behavior, right? Yeah, I understand your, pers your perspective very well, Cat Ten Barge. I get it. I get it. Why Cat Ten Barge did Manson accuser Bianca Kine, who also goes by Bianca Elaine, that's her stage name for her failed movie career, why do you think it is that she completely changed her story when she filed the lawsuit against Manson? Because in 2021, as you must know, Cat Ten Barge, because you're such an expert, in 2021, she did a podcast where she claims that nothing happened to her when she was underage except Manson gave her a one second kiss on the lips after she was flirting with him and touching his hair and stuff backstage. She claimed that in 2021, said she got a one second kiss when she, as a, as a teenager, what, 16 years old, she went to a Manson concert and she got a one second kiss. That was her claim. But then, guess what? When she figured out that she could cash in and make big bucks filing a lawsuit, suddenly in the lawsuit, she's claiming that he actually sexually assaulted her in multiple ways, in multiple serious ways, when she was a teenager. Why did she not mention those explicit sexual assaults in the hour and a half interview, podcast interview that she did in 2021, which, by the way, you can find on my channel. But of course, you've already heard that, right? Because uh, you're an expert on this case. Why is it, Cat Tend Barge, that multiple former assistants to Marilyn Manson, I've interviewed several of them, three of them on my channel now, who some of these, two of these people lived with him, actually. One of them was really good friends with him and really good friends with Evan Rachel Wood. Why is it that all three of them have said that Manson was not abusive, that they did not see any abuse, that he did not abuse Evan Rachel Wood, and why have two of them said that Evan Rachel Wood seemed kind of crazy? Also, why did one of them say that Evan Rachel Wood told him that sex with Manson was really sweet and vanilla and he wasn't into BDSM? When now, of course, Evan Rachel Wood is claiming that he was into all kinds of kinky sex that he forced on her. Why the inconsistency there? Why are three former assistants of Manson saying, that he's innocent and that he didn't do these things. And also, why does uh, Dan Cleary, former assistant of Manson, why did he say that he actually never saw Evan Rachel Wood being abused? He actually never saw anything, and yet you and others tout him as this great supporter of Evan Rachel Wood. Why? Because he came out on Twitter and he said, I support Evan Rachel Wood, even though, yeah, oh, sorry, I didn't actually see anything. It's just she had like this dark aura on her face, you know, when I saw her sometimes, and so, yeah, he must have abused her. That, that doesn't bother you? That makes perfect sense to you, huh? Yeah. Why is it that Evan's story has changed over the years? Why is it that when she finally did that documentary, that HBO documentary, suddenly she's throwing in all of this extra stuff that we had never heard before? Like, oh, he was feeding her meth in her food. Feeding her meth in her food, huh? Yeah, that's kind of like Esme Bianco who said that he was feeding her coke to calm her down because everyone knows that cocaine is a tranquilizer, right? I mean, I know I do coke all the time when I need to go to bed. Why did Esme Bianco decide to date Marilyn Manson after she claims that uh, in one of their 
early encounters as friends. He tied her to a prayer kneeler and whipped her until she had scars on her back. They weren't even dating then. She was just in a music video, and she claims that he got all crazy and violent and abusive. Well, then why did, after that horribly traumatizing abusive event, did she cheat on her husband, leave her husband for Manson, fly across the world to live with Manson, um, and then only decided to break up with him when she found out he was cheating on her? Why did she do all that? Why did she pursue a relationship? Why did she cheat on and leave her husband and fly across the world to live with Manson? If... In one of their early platonic encounters, he tied her to a prayer kneeler and whipped her during a music video. Why? Oh, yeah, I remember. When you're a victim, your brain turns to mush and nothing you do makes sense. Okay. Um, what else? What else? I mean, you know so much. I probably, Cat Ten Barge, don't even have to be going over these things, right? Because you're, you're an expert. You think about it all the time. Let me ask you another question. Why is it that Danny Masterson was prosecuted by the LADA and is now in prison for something that happened t for things that happened supposedly 20 years ago and yet Evan Rachel Wood whose uh, supposed abuse and the abuse of these other women their supposed abuse was well within that 20 year time frame and yet the LADA has done nothing no one has arrested him prosecuted him nothing why is that I keep hearing about this like statute of limitations thing well the Danny Masterson accusers, they got around that. The LADA, they got around that. Yeah? And Danny Masterson isn't accused of doing stuff that's as bad as what Manson is accused of. So what's the deal, Kat? How do you explain the fact that the LAPD went after, and the, and the, and the LADA went after Danny Masterson, but they're just sitting on Manson, this predator who, like, what, shocked and tortured and raped a bunch of women, according to you? Why? Why don't you ask them? Oh, you're an expert. Yeah. Why is it that Evan Rachel Wood claims that she had to kidnap her kid and run to Tennessee because she was so afraid that Manson and his supporters would hurt her child, and yet Evan Rachel Wood voluntarily and proudly featured her child in the major HBO documentary that she did about Marilyn Manson? She did a two-part HBO documentary a, that was an entirely a takedown piece on Marilyn Manson and she featured her son in it in multiple scenes. He was the focal point. Is that what you do when you are so terrified for the safety of your child that you abscond with the child, kidnap the child, and withhold the child from its father because you're so terrified of it being in the vicinity of Marilyn Manson? But yet, you're not too terrified, Evan Rachel Wood, right? Because then you showcased your son in a movie meant to take down Manson. So, you know, I don't know, call me crazy, but if I were worried that this rock star and his minions and his followers and supporters were going to go after my son, target my son because of what I was doing to Manson, then why on earth would I put that same child, why would I put my son in a movie I made attacking Manson? Don't you think that, you know, that might get some people to sort of focus on your son? Oh, wait, that's right. When you're a victim, your brain turns to mush. We don't need to expect any rational behavior out of you. Okay. But you don't have an issue with that, any of that, huh? Cat 10 barge. Makes per perfect sense, huh? Okay. Okay. Why is it that Evan Rachel Wood lost custody but now is lying and claiming that she voluntarily gave up custody of her child because of her fear of Marilyn Manson when her ex-husband, Evan Rachel Wood's ex-husband, who to whom she claims she gave custody of the son, lives in Los Angeles just like minutes from Marilyn Manson. So, okay, I get it. Evan Rachel Wood, you're scared that this kid is going to be near Marilyn Manson. So you voluntarily give up custody of the kid, send the kid to live with his father, who lives next to Marilyn Manson. Makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah, but that's right. When you're a victim, your brain turns to mush and nothing you do makes sense, right? Okay, so Cat 10 Barge still don't have an issue, huh? Still don't have an issue with any of this. Okay, okay. So I've got a lot of questions, Cat 10 Barge, as you can see. And I'm just thrilled to know that you've actually been paying much closer attention to the Manson case than I thought you did, because uh, apparently you think about it all the time. So I would love it if you, since you're doing all these podcasts, right, come on my show. I've got a good audience, and let's talk about these things. As, as two people who are both very interested in this Manson situation and only want to get to the truth, right? That's all you're interested in, right? Getting to the truth, following the story where it leads, because, you know, you're a journalist or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah. I've got, you know, a list of things. I'd love to uh, talk with you. Come on my show and let's uh, let's clear this up, okay? Let's clear it up. 
Yeah, right. That'll be the day, right? When hell freezes over that I get Cat Ten Barge to come on this show. But I'm serious. I'd love to have her on. Let's hash it out. Let's talk about it. But regardless, I'm going to keep exposing this hoax. I'm going to keep talking about Amber Heard 2.0. That's right, Evan Rachel Wood and the gaggle of women that she's gotten together in this ridiculous conspiracy to go after an innocent man for things that he did not do. I'm going to keep exposing it here, and I'm going to keep exposing other cases of false allegations. And so I appreciate your support. Check out my channel. Tips are always appreciated. My PayPal Patreon links are below. And uh, I will see you later. Bye, cat.